there! With this video, we're going to take a look at how to investigate instabilities in your RESA 3D model. Instabilities create quite a few questions into our tech support account. Um, they're very common and they show up in all different types of models. So we're going to show you some quick ways to troubleshoot those and some common in instances um, that I'll show you through examples in this blog that'll allow you to help learn how to troubleshoot them in your own models. They are very common, um, however, we definitely always recommend that you don't want to ignore them. You always want to investigate them to ensure that you understand what the program is trying to tell you when that instability message comes up. So my first example here is just a truss with all pinned end members, as you can see. But if I solve it, I am going to get an instability message. You always want to click yes from this unstable model warning dialog because what it's going to do is it'll open up a second model view where it automatically highlights the nodes that it's registering as unstable. To troubleshoot, you always want to compare this model view to the information displayed in the joint reaction spreadsheet. The joint reaction spreadsheet shows a little bit extra information because it not only tells you which nodes are being determined as unstable, but also in which direction. It reports this locked flag in each of the global directions that it's determining these nodes to be unstable. In this case, all four joints are being locked in the global MZ direction. So that's, if we go back to our model view here, we can see that they're all being locked against rotation about the global Z axis. If we zoom in on a couple of these and highlight the surrounding members, we can get a better feel for why this is coming up. J17 is the easiest example to start with, so I'll select the members connected to it, and we can see that all three connecting members have pinned end condition, pinned, pinned end releases, excuse me. Because of this, J17 is fixed in each of the three translational directions, but because all of these members have pinned end releases and therefore restrain no rotational forces, the program thinks that J17 can essentially spin in place. We know in real life this is not going to happen just due to our connections. However, in the model, in the modeling world, this is going to come up as an instability. Um, in order to correct this, in order to make the instability flag go away, the easiest trick is just to simply adjust the member end releases of one of the connecting members. So for instance, with this vertical web member here, if I change the end release to be fully fixed at its connection to J17, we can now see that one member is fully fixed and the other two are still pinned pinned. The purpose of doing this is having the fixity here will hold J17 in place and therefore restrain it against any rotational movement. But because the others are still pin pinned, there's not going to be the ability to have any moment transfer here. So you're still going to see all axial only forces in your truss members. So now that I've corrected that, let's go ahead and run it again and we'll see that yes, we're still getting instability messages for those other three nodes but the one previously reported here at J17 has been fixed and is no longer reported as unstable. Another similar condition I'll show you here in a second model is when you is pretty common and it'll show up if you've modeled a pinned end release member connected to a pinned boundary condition. So in this frame here, if I go ahead and solve, we're going to again see that instability message. We'll open up the model view and we'll see it's being reported at N1 and N4, both of our boundary condition locations. Similar to the last model, what's happening here is the program sees the pinned end member connected to the joint, which is connected to the boundary condition. And since both the boundary condition and the member have no rotational restraint, the program thinks that these joints N1 and N4 are free to spin in place. The quickest way to solve this is again just change those member end releases to fixed and then it'll they will hold those joints in place to prevent those instabilities from showing up. And again, since we still have pin boundary conditions at the base, you're going to see no moment transfer into your joint reactions. So you're still getting the behavior as you would expect and no more instabilities. My third and last case to show you here is one that gets a little bit 
trickier to troubleshoot. But again, with some practice, you'll start to see these patterns and start to better understand uh, where the instabilities are coming from. And therefore, it'll become easier and easier for you to troubleshoot them. So as you can see, this is just a, another simple truss. I've modeled the top and bottom cords as continuous members with fixed end releases. If I invert the selection, I can show you that all my web members have pinned end releases. If I go ahead and solve that, again we'll see the instability message. This time it's reporting right in the middle of that bottom cord at node N11. This can seem a little confusing right off the bat, but if we take a closer look at what's happening there, compare it to the information joint reactions, we can better understand what's happening. So joint reactions is telling us that that joint is locked, aka unstable, in the global MX direction. So we go back to our model view here and compare it to this global axis icon, we can see that the program is telling us that this joint is unstable about um, unstable against rotation about the global x-axis. Really what that means in this case is because our bottom cord is fully fixed but then all the connecting members are pinned, this bottom cord member is actually free to spin about its own longitudinal axis because it has no rotational restraint at any of its connecting points. And of course we have these pinned and roller boundary conditions. So the quickest way I would say to fix this situation would be to come to one of these in conditions and simply switch the members, the web member and the cord member uh, with their end fixity. So for example, here at N2, the cord has a pinned end release and the, excuse me, the web has a pinned end release and the cord has a fix. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch those. I'm going to come here, oops, I did the wrong one, there we go. So now I've switched those around, so essentially we're adding in some fixity coming in from this cord member, but again, because it's not connected to any other members with a fixed end release, there's no ability for a moment to transfer into that member, so it should still behave exactly as we want it. We'll solve it again and this time no instability messages. We can come into joint reactions and see that there's no moment forces nor any locked instability messages showing up here. Now this choosing which member to fix can take some practice as well, um, but hopefully with the use of the information in the joint reactions spreadsheet compared to the information in that instability model view, you'll be able to get quicker and quicker at investigating and correcting those. Once more, just to reiterate, we always suggest that you investigate them. You never want to just simply ignore an instability um, because certainly they can be indicative of major problems in your model. So you want to make sure you know what the program is telling you when that message comes up. And then you can choose what to do, of course, from there. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.